Hey there. Guess who? It's me. I'm live. Just because, you know, it's fun. Live's fun. Now let me find the good light, though. Let's see. Is this the good? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, let's go like this. Oh, yeah, we love that light. Um. Okay, so, look, I'm having wine. I think everybody should go live at the golden hour and drink wine. Okay, so let's see. So today, I am gonna talk to y'all about refinancing. Doesn't that sound fun? Everyone's all, no, it doesn't sound fun. Um, well, I'm often giving quotes for people and talking about do's and don'ts and helping people evaluate uh, whether a refinance and is a good idea. So I thought it would be kind of cool to um, just throw out um, a gentle reminder about um, refinancing, like refinancing do's and don'ts. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, no. It's like this? No. Okay. I don't think we're going to get away from this sun. What over here? Shit. Okay, we're gonna go back here. All right, <clears throat> so let's get down to business. So when uh, when you're looking to refinance, you should. Uh, I highly recommend reaching out to friends and family members. Um, oftentimes, when they've had a good experience, you can look to that person that provided the good experience in a positive light, right? You have direct. One of your friends or family members has direct. <laughs> direct experience with this person or company. So I really think the trust factor is big. And um, sometimes, though, we don't always have people to reach out to and to uh, to ask uh, or get referrals from, right? So um, before we go too far in, I wanted to um, – I, my sister got some really bad news today, like really bad news, and I wanted to uh, raise a glass to her and um, just let her know that, hey, I'm thinking about you, and uh, cheers to you, and may God show you the way and give you strength to live your best life. Cheers, sis. I love you. All right. I feel like I needed to say that right now. Um, okay, so where was I at? Okay, that was totally off topic, sorry. <laughs> uh, the next few items are super, super important too. So the next few items, you're, of course, you're gonna be in inquisitive about price, about the interest rate and the cost. And what a lot of people make the mistake of doing is when they're looking at the cost of the loan. So those are all the fees, right? Your escrow title, lender, appraiser, recording, notary, all of that stuff. Those are fees. And then you have your interest rate. So the things that are relative when you're shopping are going to be apples and apples. So when you're looking at the interest rate, don't look at the tax insurance portion of the, the cost because that is something that you know, we don't, I don't control the taxes. The taxes are, like right now when we're doing loans, we're estimating about nine months. But another lender may not be so savvy and he might throw out there that he's only doing two months. Well, it's not fair to compare my two months or my nine months versus his two, two months because that's really irrelevant. So when you're, when you're shopping on fees, you're really looking at what is the lender charging? Are there any discount points? Uh, how much is the uh, processing fee, the underwriting fee? So those are the main things that you're gonna be looking for. Processing, underwriting, and points. So that's where you're gonna be looking for the all things equal. And not everything is about price. You know, when I go shopping for things, um, the cheapest isn't always the best. And oftentimes, you know, if it's too good to be true, what does that mean? It probably is, right? <laughs> that's, the, that's the adage there. Um, okay, so, yeah, and then more importantly, if, if, the, if the lender is telling you a certain price, you know, can they deliver in two or three weeks or a month or whatever? I know a lot of people that I have gone with their bank, you know, they're with their bank like 
freaking six months later and the bank's still not making it happen and they're just not savvy enough to guide you through the process if you have some difficulties and you know like a just real life stuff. You know, a lot of people are, have divorces or title issues or, you know, maybe the home isn't completely in a position to be appraised. And, you know, how, what are the ways around that? There's so many different things where you need somebody that's uh, trained and experienced in lending to guide you. Um, also, can you see the reviews on, on local listings? You know, are they out there? Can you go put in that person's name? Like, go put in Teresa Timms. Um, and I'm all over the place, I'm just saying. <laughs> there are like maybe a few people that have more reviews than me. Justin Brown, for example, he has like a million reviews, but I don't know, I, I'm jealous actually, that's why I said that, I'm jealous, he has so many reviews. Well, cheers to Justin Brown too. <laughs> right, another lender, giving another lender a shout out. But no, that's, you, you pay attention to that stuff. You need to be able to validate the people that you're working with. Um, are they savvy with appraisals? So sometimes an appraisal makes or breaks a deal. So like right now, I've got a transaction where somebody wants $40,000 out. Well, if I can't get the appraisal in at 390, if I can't get the appraisal in at three, that's many making noises. If I can't get the appraisal in at 390, then my family is not gonna get the $40,000 that they need. So I've looked at the comparables and I will arm them with sales comparables that they can provide to the appraiser when, when the appraiser gets out there. I mean, you're paying for the appraisal. It's your house, it's your refinance, and you know Susie Jones down the street, her house just sold for 390,000 and yours is way better, it's way nicer, it's cuter, it has more upgrades. So why shouldn't your value come in at 390 also? So, but sometimes appraisers take the path of least resistance and they don't know that you're looking for a particular value. So they will often go uh, do an appraisal on the, on the conservative side, that and they don't do that. That's not intentional. That's just you know they don't they like on a purchase. They're going out with an intention. That house is for sale for three ninety. They're going to be looking for comps to support that value. Blah blah blah. But on an appraisal, they don't really already have like a number in mind. And it's perfectly fine to give them a number and tell them how much you, you think your house is worth and that you would like to see, of course, you're not an appraiser and you're not telling them how to do their job, but you would suggest that you feel the value as supported by these sales comparables, Mr. Appraiser, as supported by these sales comparables. So, um, of course, you could go tell somebody, I think my house is worth, you know, $600,000. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but where are the closed sales comparables? So, if you go to your bank or these online lenders, you know, they use these automated valuation models to come up with the value. So, what happens when those automated things are wrong and you think you're going to get your $40,000 and they go out there and your house isn't three ninety, dollars it's three fifty? dollars Well, poof, there goes all your money and the deal, the deal falls through. At TDR Mortgage, we take extra care on our refinances to arm you with sales comparables. Okay, <laughs> what else did I write? Um, oh, will they give you an appraisal credit at the end, like TDR Mortgage? So at the end of the transaction, is this online lender or your bank or your loan servicer going to actually pay for your appraisal? Okay. Are they a mortgage broker? Are is the person or company you're working with a mortgage broker? Did you know that um, direct lender folks, bank folks, when they're out shopping for a home loan, oftentimes they end up with a mortgage broker. A lot of really savvy, financially educated people come to mortgage brokers. And it's kind of like a little inside secret because a lot of people don't really know that mortgage brokers, not only do we have to maintain a very high level of credentials out there, but we also have to, uh, but we also have access to really super low interest rates. So that was Minnie. Okay, so are they experienced to handle challenges? Minnie, come here, come here, puppy, come here, come here, hurry. 
Come here. Come here. Okay. Oh. Are they experienced to handle um, challenges that come up in the loan process? You know, just shit happens, right? And you need to know how to deal with it. She's all worked up. She heard the jingle of another dog's collar or something. Okay. Also, are they funny? Do they make you laugh? Because at TDR Mortgage, we are hilarious. Do they have an office Pomeranian? Do they have an office Pomeranian with a pink bow? Yeah, probably not. So, so these are all questions that you should be asking yourself when you're looking for someone to help you evaluate a refinance. Let's see. And I think that's it. That's all we got today. So if you're looking to um, refinance or, you know, even if you're not sure if you should maybe cash out or do like a total combination of the first and second, it really depends on what your first is like or how much cash out. Just give me a call. We don't even have to pull your credit. We can just like run the numbers and, you know, ballpark it and fit. Gosh, calm down. And we could just ballpark it and figure out, you know, what's in your best interest and what's going to get you the best all-around deal, right? We want you, like, taken care of. We want, we want to do what's in your best interest, not in my best interest or not what's easiest for the bank or the, or the, the lender, but what's in your best interest. So I've been looking out for best interest since 1998. If you're looking to buy or sell in Southern California, pick up the phone and call me, Teresa Timps, SoCalLoanPro.com.